Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Kitsap BIPOC Business Forum. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for join, joining us tonight. I'm Dr. Lillian Lockett-Robertson, and I am the Executive Director of New Life Community Development Agency, which houses the Marvin Williams Center here in West Bremerton. I'm so glad to be here tonight. And, and here's why. When I arrived in Bremerton about 10 years ago, the first thing I wanted to know was, where are all of the black businesses? Where are the people of color? And we all know that small businesses are the heartbeat. They're the culture of the American economy. And when BIPOC businesses succeed, all businesses succeed. So during our time together tonight, we'll begin the first of many discussions on how to properly start and navigate a successful business. We'll discuss the secrets to successfully compete in this capitalistic society as BIPOC business owners and how to integrate the dollar. What are some strategies for success in doing that? Well, we do all know that playing the lottery is not our best option to build wealth, but by owning a successful business as a BIPOC and is our best way to get us there. So here's the thing, here's the thing. The things that we can all agree upon is that BIPOC businesses are necessary. BIPOC business owners bring diversity in opportunity and employment. BIPOC businesses build economic vitality within their communities. These businesses uplift communities and promote productivity and resilience. Again, when these businesses succeed, the entire community succeeds. I believe that tonight's business forum is especially important for two main reasons. The first is we are all experiencing a global pandemic that's impacted all of our businesses. It's impacted everything, our health, our businesses, and all of our lives. But I have to tell you, as you know, BIPOC businesses were some of the hardest hit. The second reason I think tonight is important is that we're reflecting on our history as black business owners. The plight of back Wall Street 100 years ago in June of 20, excuse me, June of 1921 was amazing. And so we remember that. So why are there so few BIPOC businesses today? When you think about it, black people make up about 13.4% of the American population and only 2.1% of businesses in America are black owned. So how can we improve these statistics? Well, we're here tonight to exchange ideas, to exchange information and discuss opportunities so we can all grow and we can all learn. BIPOC Wall Street business owners took responsibility to change the business landscape. And they were very, very successful at doing so. And I believe you're all here tonight as BIPOC business owners and future entrepreneurs because you've made the decision to be successful in business, to monetize your creative ideas and your God-given passions to solve needed problems. You're here because you're eager to learn strategies to successfully navigate business institutions, banks, and boardrooms. And you're here because you're committed to make the best decisions you can to build wealth for generations to come. So tonight, we're here from speakers, from business agencies, armed with information and experience to help your businesses become successful. But most importantly, we wanna hear from you with questions and answers. There's a poll in the chat box. Please be sure to respond to that. But before we go on any further, let's hear from our welcome panel. And they are Ms. Faith Lemister, who is a former Bremerton City Councilwoman and business owner our own mayor, Greg Wheeler, and Kitsap County's commissioner, Charlotte Burrito. Thank you and welcome. Take it away, panel. Good, e good evening and welcome everyone to our Bi Kitsap BIPOC um, forum tonight. And we are just so excited that you have joined us tonight uh, during your busy, busy schedule and, and Zooming here and Zooming there. We are so excited that you chose to be with us tonight. And on behalf of the city of Bremerton, 
uh, race, equity, and uh, advisory committee. We want to welcome you. And also on behalf of Kida, uh, who is co-sponsoring and co-hosting tonight. At this point, I'm going to turn you into the hand of our um, mayor, uh, city of Bremerton, uh, Greg Wheeler. Everybody, hi, this is Joe Morrison. I'm from Kita, and I am emailing Mayor, Mayor Wheeler right now because nothing goes perfectly when technology is involved. So let's go to Commissioner Greedo and we'll see if we can get the mayor's invite link sorted out. He's working on it. Go ahead, Commissioner Greedo. Well, thank you very much. And thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this panel this evening um, about Black, Indigenous, people of color uh, businesses in Kitsap County. I think it's an important conversation for us to have. I look forward to hearing what uh, the panelists have to say, the other panelists, and for the questions and uh, questions that will be coming to us this evening. I think we will all learn something. Uh, but thank you to the KEDA for coordinating this forum this evening. Again, I appreciate so much being able to be present this evening. Well, and I am still emailing with Mayor Wheeler. So what I'd like to do and recommend we do, uh, Dr. Robertson, is we go back to you and I'll see if I can get the mayor admitted. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Garrido and Ms. Faithful and Mr. What a warm welcome to us all. Of course, we're waiting on our mayor to show up. He's always been just a wonderful supporter of BIPOC businesses. So we're excited to see him when he shows up. But I'm gonna go ahead and introduce uh, our next presenter. Uh, this is gonna be a wonderful opportunity for us to learn and a tremendous listening opportunity as well. Recently, I had the privilege of speaking with Jamie Forsyth and I was extremely impressed with the wealth of knowledge and creative insight she shared about how to make small businesses successful. Since coming to Kitsap County in 2006, Jamie has channeled her MBA and experience in supporting small businesses, revitalizing her community and making connections that matter in her robust and wide ranging local network. Currently, Jamie is a certified business advisor for Kitsap with the Small Business Development Center of Western Washington University. She's got 30 years of business experience, which includes diverse experiences as international marketing for a tech firm, advising an entrepreneurial unit of the federal government in a major reorganization, and evolving a small nonprofit into a multi-million dollar organization. Jamie has traveled extensively and recently to Paris with the Washington State Trade Delegation to promote the West Sound area. Join me tonight in welcoming Jamie Forsett. Jamie, it's your time to speak to the village. All right, thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Lillian, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, and thank you. I'm just so uh, excited to be a part of this. And I have to have a little bit of a disclaimer here. A anytime you do something for the first time, you're just trying to figure it out. And um, one of the things when we first met was, you know, my first thought was, well, you know what, we can't be telling people things. We need to be listening. We need to hear what they need. And then the more astute people as they have you know, clearly figured out was that, well, first maybe we should tell them what, what we have to offer so they can react to that and let us know if there's um, some unmet needs. So, you know, I feel like this, you know, it's not, I don't own this listening session. You know, you can uh, feel free to ask questions to anybody along the way. And I'm sure everyone's gonna, um, you know, have something to, um, that might pique your interest or might apply to you. Um, the Small Business Development Center is just one of the organizations that uh, is here tonight and, and everyone is bringing something to the, to the table here. So, you know, while um, we're just gonna do our best again, like I feel like I don't own the listening session, you know, that we all wanna hear, we all wanna react to, um, you know, what the, what the needs are in this community and um, how well we're doing now and what we can do going forward um, to even better, you know, meet the needs. And so one of the things, while I don't wanna dwell, um, I don't wanna to spend too much time on slides, but the first thing is what I realize with the Small Business Development Center is 
probably more than half the people first assume that I'm the small business administration. So that's the first thing I need to clear up. And then from there it's, and then, um, you know, there's probably um, another, you know, bunch of people who think that I just fill out forms to get SBA loans. Nope, don't do that either. So I really wanted to just set a foundation for, you know, what, what do we do and kind of anchor the Small Business Development Center um, as, uh, you know, one of these vital organizations. So I'm going to, I am going to show a few slides here and can I share a screen? Let's see here. All right, that, except that what's hiding here is my ability to turn this into, um, a slideshow, it's being hidden from me, just a sec. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this a different way here. There we go. Okay, does that work for everybody? Hopefully, okay, great. Okay, so this is, I just wanted to, this is the, you know, the way too wordy part of it, but, um, you know, we are a national network of business advisors providing expert customized advising, training and market intelligence to existing businesses and entrepreneurs to promote and support economic vitality in our local community. And I promise that's the only really wordy slide I'm going to have here, but it's just the big picture is we're just here um, for 40 years, Act of Congress uh, created this through the Small Business Administration, and it's administered through state colleges and universities and local stakeholders. So this, um, our, uh, we are partners with the SBA. And so one of the big things was during the pandemic, you know, that's pretty much the most of what I've been doing for the last year is helping small businesses in Kitsap County navigate, you know, what resources were available for them, you know, during the pandemic. There's about a thousand of the SBDCs throughout the US. Uh, I work with uh, for WWU, there's the biggest SBDC in the state is in Bellingham. And then we collaborate with um, the SBDCs throughout Washington state. And what that means for you is that, that your resource with the SBDC is way bigger than just me. It's, um, you know, if I had, for example, if you're someone who wants to export, we have state export specialists that we can, we can bring in to um, assist you and hold your hand and walk you through that whole process of connecting you with a viable market. I know we've just brought together um, cider producers in Washington state to meet with the Mexican market. Um, we've helped an individual business uh, with natural products connect to markets in Korea. And they've gone from working out of a garage to a, a running a factory in, uh, south of Olympia now. And, and again, we're hosted by Western Washington University and all of us associated with the SBDCs. We're MBAs, we go through a six month certification process to make sure we know what we're doing. And um, you know, our only mission, most of us are actually have, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, I should never, there we go, <laughs> hit the wrong button. Anyway, and then locally, we're funded by um, local stakeholders. Right now, it's the ones that helped launch this center as the city of Polsbo, Kitsap Bank, Kitsap Credit Union, First Federal, and Kitsap Regional Library. Although um, we're hoping that that's, uh, that uh, number of stakeholders um, is gonna be growing shortly. Um, everything you do with us is strictly confidential. Uh, we get reviewed, all of our metrics, you know, we have to show impact in our community for us to survive as a center. And we have all sorts of layers of accountability that do that. The core services, we, there's, there almost isn't anything, you know, we, we can't do for you. So rather than give you a really long list of things, I just wanted to highlight a few things. When you call uh, into the center or email or talk to me on the street uh, or however you get a hold of us, um, it, it's really just what you need. There was a lot of just a single phone call is all you needed for the moment. Other people, I'm working with them. I've been working with them for over a year as they're growing their business and making some big changes to their business or just trying to survive during the pandemic. Uh, we always, we've been meeting on Zoom lately. I'm starting to be able to meet people at their place of business or um, 
uh, over Zoom as well, we're, you know, or, or at our office in the Poulsbo Library. Um, and, uh, and that's been pretty great to see people in person for the first time. Uh, a big thing, big part of what we do is access to capital, which is huge for most businesses. And besides your local bankers who were actually just rock stars during the pandemic, might I say, um, you know, there's other sources, there's other ways to access funding outside of conventional sources, and we can help you with that. We don't, uh, SBA loans are not actually, you know, they're actually, you acquire them through your bank. They aren't uh, actually provided by the SBA, except in the rare occurrences of um, a pandemic. Uh, we do do a lot of webinars uh, and community connections. You know, I've been really involved in the Kitsap community for 14 years now, and and um, it helps a lot, you know, besides knowing that uh, KEDA has so many resources, there's a lot of other ways that because, you know, of my investment in Kitsap County, I can help you make um, connections. Market research, we have databases beyond even what the library has, and the library has some great ones, uh, which might meet your needs. And if not, you know, we can, we can do a deeper dive with some subscription databases we have. Again, exporting, you know, we can, if you have a product that um, there's a market for abroad, we'll help you navigate that. And again, there's just no cost for any of this. And this, you know, one thing I wanted to kind of get the conversation started with is that um, we have a ton of startups right now. And, and technically we work with businesses that are already in business, but there's um, uh, a lot of people right now that have a viable path to becoming um, to becoming a business. This is one of our clients, as you can guess, who's given us permission um, to use her name. Um, but anyway, the big thing about starting a business is, you know, we want to help you figure out if it's a viable business. And what I do for anyone is. Yeah, when, if you come in with an idea, is start to drill down and see how invested you are in that business. Because we have a lot of people right now, and I can give you some examples. You know, we have um, someone who um, uh, they came to us and they said, okay, we've got um, an idea that can revolutionize the construction business, and we just need a quarter million. So can you help us find that? And in the end, you know, when you start to look at, um, when you start to work through all these, these questions, it turns out that they didn't actually have, they had never done a, um, uh, they had never um, built the thing, first of all. They didn't have any background in the market. Uh, they didn't have any money, you know, to commit to it. And they just thought that we could just, you know, give them money for a, an idea. And, you know, in the end, anyone that's loaning you business, you know, they, they want to know, you know, that they're going to get paid back. So they want you to show the viability you know, of your idea. And there's other people who they might not have the financial resources, but say, for example, uh, there was someone, she has like 15 years of childcare background and she wants to open her own um, daycare, but she doesn't have the financial resources. Well, that's a really interesting one because she has the experience. She's putting the time to learn her market and um, she may not have the resources, but there's a huge need so there are people interested, you know, um, in supporting that kind of um, enterprise. Um, there's other ones where it's just like we can help you figure out the path to viability, like the startup restaurant where, you know, they're starting like um, Amelie, for example, they're starting out in a commercial kitchen without a brick and mortar. And now that they've been doing that for the last five months, you know, they're ready to look for a brick and mortar and they've now got experience, you know, they know the market, you know, they know what risk, you know, they're willing to take. Uh, I had another client, for example, who he wanted to buy a restaurant and uh, he came to me because he said, well, he said, we were ready to pay the 143,000 to get this great restaurant in this beautiful location, but people said, you know, we should come and talk to you. And so we're not really sure why we're here to talk to you. I said, oh, okay, let me, let me ask you about this, this restaurant. Well, it turns out they didn't own, the people who were selling it for 143,000 didn't own the restaurant. And so he had to go to um, the building owner to ask how to, um, you know, to, to see about a lease for it. So there's that. And then the, all of the equipment in the restaurant was 30 years old. 
and uh, the furniture was, you know, not that great. And so the choice he had to make actually was, you know, is he going to buy all the food they're leaving in the kitchen and walking away in this old furniture and this uh, kitchen equipment that has no value on the open market, or should he just go to the landlord and lease the space and use the hundred forty-three thousand dollars to put in a new kitchen, you know, and uh, and you know, create his own you know space brand new. And so, you know, it was a big, it was a big deal, um, you know, to figure out the difference between, you know, getting something that you're going to have to replace right away and throwing away one hundred forty-three thousand dollars versus, um, you know. Uh, being able to do it on your own. And he was ready to pay that money. So, you know, for, for people who are in startup mode, wanting to do something that they've never done before and, and testing the waters, you know, I'm happy to do, um, to, you know, be your sounding board and help you, you know, make good decisions. We always talk about entrepreneurs who fail their way up. For most entrepreneurs, the first idea was never usually the best idea unless that idea was like Spanx or Velcro or something. But typically, you know, it's going to take a while to work it out. And what, you know, we, we don't want you to do is to, you know, waste your time and your resources um, when, um, you know, we can help you, you know, um, act more strategically and, and filter through some of those, those startup ideas, you know, to get you going. And Dr. Dr. Lillian, do you have any um, you know, based on what we were talking about before, were there any things that you think that, uh, any questions you had? Well, there are a couple of questions in the chat, but I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to talk about the best time to contact the SBDC. Should you do it at the start of the idea or should you contact the SBDC after you've made some traction with, with getting the business started? So if you could clarify that, then we could start with what's in the chat. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a... That's a Oh, I'm getting a feedback here. Are you hearing that? But anyway, that's a good, um, that's a great question. And so basically what we look for is, um, do you have skin in the game? You know, have you, have you worked through the idea? What do you have to show for it? Um, that um, uh, is more than just bringing us the idea where um, it's just, you have this idea in your head. You know, what, what can you show in terms of traction that you've gotten? Have you tried to fill out a business plan? Is it something where you're already experienced and so you know the market? Um, is it, uh, you know, I mean, just, just show us you know, some traction. And, and if not, um, you know, I'll help you um, give you some um, checkpoints, you know, to say when you get this far, you know, this is a great time to, to come and talk to us. But I'm always happy to, you know, take a phone call, to respond to an email, um, you know, to direct you to other resources, because there's other resources too. Like I direct people to the best program and say, well, if you want to like, you know, learn more about what it takes to, um, you know, to vet an idea and, and learn about running a business, you know, they've got a program uh, in our community. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to, and there's the SCORE advisors, they're retired business professionals um, who are happy to meet with people one-on-one -on -one as well. So, I mean, everyone's happy to, you know, take your call, but, um, you know, and, and talk to you. But, but again, I would just, uh, you know, you'll, you'll start, if you really wanna be an entrepreneur, you'll just keep coming back, you know, until you find that idea where you can get traction and, and we can help you move forward on that idea. Thank you, Jamie. One other question, a couple of questions that are coming through. Does the SBDC support nonprofits? And then secondly, uh, does the SBDC support new businesses with feed seed funding ideas and opportunities? Well, we can, we can talk to you about, about well, those, yeah, those are kind of two questions. Okay, so nonprofits. Well, when I started, you know, the idea, we were told that no, you know, we don't, um, you know, we don't support nonprofits. We've just had to, you know, focus in on this certain area. But in reality, you know, the pandemic hit. And, and especially once, you know, a nonprofits had access to the same funding, then I was, you know, all over that in terms of, you know, trying to, you know, there's no difference to me, you know, in terms of if somebody, if I can help somebody get access to this funding. And now the way I look at it is, you know, I sort of have to, because I'm, you know, one person at this point, and with a lot of support from Bellingham, because Kitsap is, has a really growing need, 
But, um, but, but one of the things is right now, I just look at it. If you're a big enough nonprofit to be hiring employees, you know, then, you know, you have the same kind of needs as any business, you know, in terms of, um, you know, just, you know, expanding your reach and growing your business. What it might, if you're like a, someone at home who's raising money for a good cause, you know, I, I, I really don't have a lot um, at that level. But again, like I said, for all those things, the way a nonprofit is just a business, you know, that funnels its, its profits in a certain way. And so, you know, I'm, you know, like I said, I, if you have a brick and mortar building, you know, if you are hiring employees, if you're, you know, uh, uh, you know, a substantial nonprofit, sure, you know, I can help. You can come. Anyone can come anyway, but, but, um, but anyway, so, um, and then what was the other one? The other one was about um, funding. Funding is always, you know, always a big issue. And, um, you know, depending on what program uh, is going on at any particular time, uh, you know, we've got, we are very good at keeping abreast of um, interesting funding opportunities. Um, you know, when you're talking about, you um, uh, venture capitalists or, you know, some of that seed funding stuff, you're probably going to be more of a technical or a bigger, you know, type of uh, company than most of our small businesses in Kitsap are. And so more we look at the creative things. Like right now, I don't even know that Kiva, as some of you might know, because, you know, Kiva operates, um, does these no interest, no fee loans in, uh, it was in developing countries, but now they have a foothold in Denver, Colorado. And they provide uh, these kind of loans, interesting crowdfunding type loans for up to $15,000. And they currently have a, pro a program, some special programs going on now because of the, the pandemic and stuff. And, you know, we've got some other things coming down the pike too. There's another one, and I'm not sure how they're going to change it. But if you've heard of the targeted idol, it was, it was just for people in low income areas who, um, uh, who had applied for the idol last year, but now I heard they're going to open it up to everybody as long as you are in the low income area. And in Kitsap County, there's going to be small businesses who I'm going to want to get that word out when that comes, um, particularly uh, in, um, there's patches in Port Orchard, in Bremerton, sadly not in Silverdale, David Emmons. And um, and oddly, the low income area of Front Street in Paulsbo. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, we just, we meet with the SBA every week, um, you know, to hear, you know, what's going on that way. And then we just are doing our own uh, research in terms of other things. So happy to look at options for who you are and what you're, what you're trying to get. Thank you. I think that's I think that's it for now. Uh, if you could just address real quickly where folk can go to help get a business going back. Yeah, uh, someone made a comment about access to capital being difficult. You know, it's it's really difficult for everybody. But but I would say there's some creative programs right now. One thing I just heard we have we just met with another um, uh, individual, an organization that connects people. Um, for alternative financing. And the one thing he did say is he said, it's almost impossible right now to get uh, financing for um, restaurants and hospitality industry, um, you know, unless you can get a conventional loan. Um, and that means you have collateral, um, you know, or you have, you know, funds to invest for a percentage of the funds, you know, that you need. So, um, yeah, but it, but again, you know, every every case is individual, and we're just happy to, you know, work with anybody, um, uh, you know, to see what we can do. Okay, is there anything for mixed use owner occupied? I don't even know what the actual question is from a small business perspective. Gina, can you? What are, you, what are you looking for exactly? I mean, just grants, is that? We're kind of running out on the grants right now, except for that targeted idol. So um, again, and that's all about right now, it's all focusing on low income. And the other thing is it's still focusing on businesses that were open before the pandemic. So, um, 
you know, it's unfortunately, you know, those brave souls who have launched businesses, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, again, just, you know, come and see me. I'm happy to try and sort through and see whatever your needs are. Cause sometimes, you, you know, we can be creative about things again, if there's alternative financing, that's not a conventional loan, but that's, you know, especially for this community, the BIPOC community, uh, you know, a lot of effort is being focused on figuring out how we can um, raise up, um, you know, all these businesses in our community. Jamie, I think that, I think that covers everything. Um, of course, you're gonna be available for further questions and you'll be able to respond to the chat. But I think we're now at a point to go to our second block. And that's with you to introduce Linda Lee Womack. And before we go to Linda Lee Womack, if I could humbly um, admit, we know technology causes trouble. We do have Mayor Wheeler with us. So if, if we could hear from Mayor Wheeler, if that's all right. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. And, um, and thank you for your, uh, squeezing me in. I'll keep it short. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here just to let everybody know I, I am very, very supportive of this effort. It's, um, it's been a long time coming. In communities like Bremerton in particular, my passion won't reach its full potential until we establish connections to all of our, all of our people. And especially tonight, focusing on our, on our Kitsap uh, Black Indigenous people of color. And I'm, I'm here to let you know I am a resource. And my job is to know when to lead, know when to follow or to stand beside and support. And my role takes me in a, a many different ways. And I, I've been a supporter here. I remove obstacles where I can provide resources. I will always do this for this effort. And you can count on me, this is, an, this is a long game. We should all, we should all accept this as, a, as, our, as the way life is going to be. And so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what we're all doing here, what you're all doing. I, I don't wanna name everybody here that's a leader by name. I'd, be, I'd spend the rest of my time talking, but I, I will share with you just a quick side note to, to show the seriousness of Bremerton. Um, we are bringing, I am bringing forward a, a proposal to the council to adopt Juneteenth as a, as a formal city of Bremerton holiday. And it's, these are built, these actions, not by them themselves, don't, don't solve anything. But if we combine them with what you're doing tonight, and we combine them with the other efforts that we are working together on, we can, we can be a shining example. So um, I, will, I will stand down now. I will stand in the background. I'm, I'm, I wanna hear the resources and I'm also gonna take note of where the gaps might be because that's the goal is to close those gaps. So thanks everybody. Yes, and I will be introducing Linda as the next speaker. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to or, share screen. Or I, Dr. Luyen, or do I uh, put you back on the stage? I, well, I think, you're, I think you're right there. You're always appropriate. And so Linda is the next speaker. And so you, uh, we're right on time. We're on task. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. I have shared my screen. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I will get started. So I'm just gonna turn this because I always have backup just in case. Okay, good evening everyone. And thank you Mayor Wheeler for introducing me. My name is Linda Womack and I am the program director for uh, the Minority Business Development Agency, Washington Business Center, but we say Tacoma Business Center because it is located in Tacoma but we do cover all minority businesses that are established in the state of Washington. So um, we serve the state. And uh, just a little bit about, now we just call it the MBDA now. It was started by executive order 
And it was one of the agencies under the US Department of Commerce uh, that was specifically um, created to support black businesses and then also uh, the larger minority businesses um, in the United States. And we are one of the 36 centers across the country. So we, are, we serve as the regional office. Is they but I get to okay. I get to serve um all you know businesses so we cover uh, Washington and Oregon and the program focus is consulting to established minority owned firms to grow and hire people so it's for our program it's um we'd like to you can be a sole proprietor but we really would like to uh, for your businesses to be able to hire people, um, you know, and then also um, to retain employees. So again, our drivers are job creation, retention of awards and procurement contracts. And that could be a private, we help you secure private contracts, especially in construction. We're doing quite a bit there. And also municipality contracts um, as yeah, the city of Tacoma, city of Seattle, and now um, Kitsap so that, um, um, you can get on those um, projects. And, you know, a small works roster are a great place for small businesses to um, get opportunities so that you can scale uh, for larger federal types of contracts. And also, once you land those contracts, you need access to capital financing. And so that would be in uh, procuring of um, uh, working with um, financial institutions such as a CDFI, which is the Community Development Financial Institutions, there are several of them in the state of Washington and uh, for your working capital and then also to um, obtain your bonding so that you can um, meet the performance and payment bonds. But also, I don't know if you know this, there's an RCW code with the state of Washington that if those contracts are 150,000 150, or less, a lot of the uh, municipalities can waive that bonding requirement. So a lot of small businesses didn't know that. So um, those are some of the technical skills that we can provide for you. Um, in the past, uh, MBEs that we served were right at that million dollar mark, but now um, that has been waived. So as long as you are established with some type of revenue, you can come to us for support. And the next slide will tell you a little bit specifically about the types of services that we provide. And then also, um, if you're not at that you know revenue threshold, um, we support a lot of IT companies and um, uh, support uh, with manufacturing firms, especially with lean production. Um, we worked with one in Port Orchard. She grows her own apples and she wanted a way to find out how she can um, make her warehouse more efficient. And so we worked with companies like Impact Washington and funded um, that lean consulting support so that she can, you know, her business can become more efficient. Um, so this is just kind of a services at a glance and the types of technical assistance that we offer in those three categories, um, access to capital, as I've said earlier, identifying broker financing opportunities. And this is what we're really good at. And um, SBDC score, they all do a great job. I call them the technical assistance ecosystem partners, but um, at times you need that real CPA uh, support or bookkeeper support. And we have them on retainer so that we don't help you find there and get a bookkeeper so those um, uh, classifications are coded correctly. And then we feed it up to our CPAs and then they ensure that, uh, you know, your balance sheet, your cash flow and your projected cash flow looks good so that you can, you know, include that in your business plan. So um, going back to access to capital, um, you know, there's a lot of hope out there right now. Um, I want you to keep in touch with me and then also our team here um, in that National Development Council is going to be launching a program called the Flex Fund Washington. And it's not going to be based on assets. So it's not an asset-based lending. It's going to look at your revenue for the six months. So they'll take into, you know, the multiple um, things. So it's not just on credit score. It's not just on collateral but they're gonna be looking at revenue along with um, a small little tidbit so that more women and minority owned firms um, can you know, obtain access to capital. And they're looking at, um, and these are uh, not you know, your 10 or 15,000 because let's be real, when we go to a conventional bank, 
15, 20,000 is not going to get us a lot, especially when you're trying to retrofit restaurants, get those grease traps. And you, you know, the permitting requirements, they can be extensive, right? And so what they're looking at is trying to provide loans up to about 150,000 so that you have real meat, something to work with, right? So um, th that's a good one to really keep. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's going to launch sometime, I believe, in the by the third week of this fourth, I think, end of July. But it's called the Flex Fund Washington. Keep just drop that down, Flex Fund Washington. And also another couple of CDFIs that you really should be looking at is the Business Impact Northwest, and I think she's mentioned that earlier. But and Craft Three. Why? Because Mackenzie Bezos gave millions of dollars to Craft Three so that. Uh, they can um, provide more um, lending, you know, to uh, especially uh, the underrepresented businesses. So again, Craft Three Business Impact Northwest Flex Fund uh, Flex Fund Washington. Now going back to access to contracts, they, people say, Linda, how do you support us with that? You know, so number one, if you want to take advantage of any set aside programs, certifications are going to be so important. The NBDA is not a certifying body, but all the certifications, whether it's a small business designation, women, um, your DBE disadvantaged business, white firms, male can qualify for that also, but it's called the DBE and um, your minority MBE certifications. Those are all handled at the state. Um, but as you know, when you go on to the OMWBE website, sometimes it can just be daunting. You don't know if you should click, should I get my MBE and my DBE separately? No. If you get your MBE and DB certification at the same time, they waive the fee. So you don't have to pay the $125. So there are little technical nuances that uh, sometimes uh, people need to understand. And I think we really excel here at the MBDA in that pre-submittal process. So meaning we support you with all the paperwork, the notary service, so that you can hit that submit button to the state. And then it usually takes about 90 to 120 days to get certified. And one thing you should know, it's not on the day that you submit the submit button that the clock starts ticking for your certification. It is when that application is assigned out of the pool to an analyst. So we want to make sure that uh, you get those uh, certifications in early and then we can act as the advocate, make those phone calls and say, hey, you know, I have a company that's, you know, needing their certification. What's what's going on with that? So. Um, we've uh, worked well with the state in that capacity. And um, we also um, can help you identify opportunities. Uh, we um, look at your solicitation analysis and bid proposals, especially in the federal contracting. And um, also we provide you, once you become a client of the MBDA Center, um, we, we use this uh, little expensive system called Construct Connect, but we can get those opportunities to you for free so that you can see throughout the state what is available in your NAICS code or your commodity codes. And then all, we also do matchmaking services with primes, prime construction firms, and also manufacturing. There's many different industries that they will maybe pick up the phone when I call um, to say, hey, this is Linda with MBDA, can I speak to you? And usually they will call and then I will tell them about your business and maybe have your capability statement to say, hey, this firm is trying to do business with you. Um, what are you looking for? So we can serve as an advocate. And also, as we are under the U.S. Department of Commerce, which is federal, um, we work with the Export-Import Bank, as well as the United States Export Assistance Center and the Commercial Office. So if you want to go international, we can look at those markets and provide those um, uh, analysis and studies for you at no charge. So these are some of the typical services. And you'll get all of these slides of everyone. So I'm just, you know, I don't have too many minutes to talk to you. And I'm sure you have some Q&A. So again, we talked about access to capital uh, for construction firms. Linda, I need some support. I need to understand if my takeoffs are done correctly. We can offer review of the bid estimating that you're about to submit. Why? Because we have um, uh, ex-project managers on retainer with our, um, with, our, uh, with, the, with our office to work with you. Um, also, if you need support with... Um, uh, producing capability statements of uh, that's more in the construction and goods and services industries on um, that is what that is and then also you're updating your sales brochure marketing collateral and material we can support you with that and also this is another one legal counseling again it's not personal stuff but it's more business especially in construction 
um, we want to make sure that you look at those uh, contracts, especially on the payment terms, to ensure is it paid when paid by the primes, or is there any other payment terms that can be negotiated? So we have um, Cressman Allers and Slate, which is a number one construction firm in based in Seattle. We work with, and they're on retainer with us to support you. Um, usually you can get five hours of consultation at no charge. And then they, they can also look at, if it's non-construction, they can look at other um, contracts and proposals that you have just to ensure that you know what you're getting into. And it's nice to get that legal service, um, I think. And also, again, we talked about the uh, preparation of the financial statements we do for you. Um, and then also the matchmaking with primes. Um, we don't develop business plan, but we can definitely review them for you. So I always tell folks it's good to kind of leverage uh, the technical assistance ego and a partner such as the small business center and also um, SCORE. And then, um, you know, website, we don't develop if new, but I need to change that. It's more if you need it to be optimized or if you need a little bit of a facelift, we can definitely help you with that um, because we serve so many businesses and we used to do the website development, but it just was not cost um, effective at times. But we found that when these businesses needed to um, have their site optimized, um, that's where we have our specialists come in and uh, they'll get into your system and start working with you so you, you can get your website um, fresh and updated. Finally, <clears throat> if you are in the construction firm or goods and services, these are some capacity building, I call them opportunity programs for your firm. The website is listed here and WashDOT um, has a program that um, actually we're, we're managing. It's called the Capacity Building Mentorship Program and it's, um, it's called the CMVP. And it pairs small minority veteran women businesses with successful primes and consultants. Um, so they, you know, are paired and matched together. And these mentors provide technical assistance and also all types of strategic consulting and uh, to the protege. Um, and they want to be able for you to land those, um, you know, wash dot contracts. So the pairing usually lasts about two years. So this is a great program. And currently we have 22 prime firms and these are large like Absher, Clark, uh, PCL, uh, Turner Construction, Kiwit and things of that nature. And they'll be taking on new cohorts starting in uh, July, August. So please go to the website and just kind of uh, check it out. And if you have any questions um, at the end of the slide, my contact is there also on the handout tonight, you'll have contact. So please do contact me if you're interested. Another program, um, I'm sorry, the first one is with Washdot and Sound Transit. So it, these are two mega uh, road related uh, industry, you know, uh, industries that got together to create this program and we're managing it. So I can answer all the questions for you. And finally, the last one, if you are a DBE certified firm in the state of Washington, there are funds available for you um, so that you can um, grow your business and uh, pro get some operational um, business um, technical assistance. And, the, uh, and each firm that participates gets up to $5,000. So we'll go in, we'll do the assessments. And this one, we can they can help with website um, development, refresh, update, uh, your back office operations, and then help you set up your certified payroll. Um, also, um, any type of marketing assistance support. I mean, we have uh, about 32 firms participating in this program and uh, we have room for 50. So ensure that um, you definitely sign up. And here, if you are a DBE firm, just click onto that link. The, the registration process is really easy. Um, probably takes 30 seconds. And then from there, one of our team will reach out to you, conduct an assessment, and then get those um, support services directly to you. And with that, that is the end of my presentation. I'm sure that you, know, you probably didn't even know that MBDA existed because we happen to be <laughs> located in Tacoma. So it's usually like right around, you know, see, uh, see, let's see a lot of businesses in. The, Seattle, Renton, Lacey, but you know what? We would love to work with you more. And I always tell folks, there's no wrong door to go through to get support. You can come to us. And then if we can't say, mm, it doesn't, it's not quite what we can do, but I will help you as much as I can. And then I bring in the other um, eco, you know, technical assistant ecosystem partners, SBDC, the Women Business Center, the Veteran Business Center, University of Washington, Seattle. There's a lot of support out there. So again, don't be afraid, reach out to one of us and then, um, you know, so that uh, you can get the support that you need. And with that, 
I am open for questions. Well, maybe I did a good job. Nobody has questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, did a, you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I don't know if the mics are open. Uh, Joe, are the mics open for folks to ask questions? Or are we just? I believe the microphones are open. And I just wanted to say thanks to everybody for being so amazing with uh, their microphone management. Uh, it's, it's great to see. Um, but if you have a question, feel free to post it in the chat. Uh, or you can try it here right now live on audio. And for uh, Keita, I just wanted to say that once I get the green light, I would love to get you involved in the Flex Fund um, and, and learning more about it through the NDC, where your businesses will be able to, you know, uh, obtain that access to capital because you're right. Access to capital is some of the, the, the most difficult. Thanks, Linda. Um, Kita is keyed into the conversation about Flex Fund. Oh, good. And, okay. and Linda, and then, no, that's okay. We plan to have you out to Kitsap. <laughs> and our next event is going to be about DBE certification and getting those um, federal and state certifications. So I got lots of plans for you, Linda. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, you might as well. You know, I'm like, hello, let, let some others, you know, that's all play nice. Yeah. So yes, I would love to go out there. And you know, even during COVID, I put my mask on, I'm vaccinated. I've been going into the office and traveling and I just love connecting mm -hmm. with people because there's something about that, you know, looking someone in the eye and, and having that physical, you know, a space together to conduct business. So I'm all game. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Linda. That's a great presentation. Oh. And I, see <laughs> I know Mar with general construction. They <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they, you know what? Them brothers are doing it. They are young <laughs> African-American business uh, in uh, construction. They do excavating. They do underground utilities. I mean, they found us. Uh, I don't know how, but in the last two years, I can tell you, they have benefited greatly from our program. And then just the network that we're able to open, right? Because when you go through one door, it just provides opportunity and connections to other people. So I always tell folks, look, just break the door down and get in. If it's not us, it's somebody else. Or I know another service or, or they may too. So that's great. I'm so glad to hear Kitsap. You're right. That Marwa General Construction. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Thank you, Linda. Great information. Great information. So there's more in the chat. And as you see, Linda, more questions, you can answer those in the chat as well. We're going to move to Nancy Austin with the best program. So Nancy. Hi, hi everybody and welcome to the program tonight. I'm here to talk about the program that, that Kisap Community Resources has. It's business education support and training. And we've been involved in this micro enterprise process since 2001 when we first started the program over here. What we do is at the other end of the spectrum, if you will, it's great for people who think they want to start a business, have a business idea, and want to get a basic idea of how to start one. So we help you develop your business concept, understand your target market, customer base, and money management is really important. We actually start out the program by talking about your personal finances. Are you in a position where you can start a business? Do you have any money you can set aside each month to help fund your business? Then we go through how to keep your books for your business. What is a profit and loss statement? How do you set your pricing? We talk about legal structures, operations, marketing, sales. And by the end of our eight week program, we really hope people will have a business plan. Now it's not an extensive business plan like you would use to go see Jamie to help get um, advanced help. But it's a basic one, is my idea feasible? Can I make this work? Is there, is, am I making something that somebody's going to want to buy? So we're at the very basic end. And as we're happy to say, Jamie, when she gets somebody who needs some basic business training, she refers them to us. We are primarily funded 
through community development block grants and their economic development arm. So we get money from the city of Bremerton and also from Kitsap County. So the primary focus on the program has been for helping low income and disadvantaged people start a business to, to provide economic security. Some people it's just a side hustle. Others, they really want to help themselves get a hand up and that's what we do. We also are funded through the Washington State Microenterprise Association, which allows us to reach a, a, a broader uh, group of people. But what we really want to do and why we're here tonight is to let the bike pot community know about our program. We really would like to get more people involved and that's been a big um, push for both our CDBG and for the Washington State Microenterprise Association. How do we bring it to the Black community, the Hispanic community, and even in our Kitsap County, the tribes. So that's our focus. And we're working in the month of June on how we expand our outreach to get to cover more people. Um, also, one advantage of our program is if you're unemployed and you have a, a skill that you think you can develop into a business, you can join our program under the Self-Employment Assistance Program. SEEP is what it's called. So rather than go out and when, you, when you're out looking for business, when you're unemployed right now, people don't have to do that. So we don't have as many of those people, but you go out and you come to our classes and you come to our um, uh, advanced business workshops and you don't have to look for another job. You get your unemployment and we sign off on you each week that you're making progress for your business. So that's another big benefit I think that we offer. Uh, we do eight-week business training classes, usually once a quarter. We are taking this summer off because it looks like we're going to be transitioning from the, the online we've been doing for the last year into in-person classes in September. So we're really excited about that. We find that being in-person is going to be much better. We get a much better connection with people and get more camaraderie amongst the new business owners versus just being on Zoom or go-to training. So we do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching with business professionals. And if you have a really good business idea that really looks promising, then we suggest you go see Jamie. And now I'm happy to um, uh, see what Linda does tonight. So that might be another option for some of our, some of our businesses that are really growing. We do advanced business workshops. So after you go through the eight weeks, this last month, we've done two a month, most of this year, covering things like getting your business online, coming out of the COVID coma, financial planning. So we have, and those are all free. Our basic program is on a sliding scale based on whether you're low income, moderate income, very low income. And the most you'll pay is $249 for the eight weeks, but the lowest level is $60 for the eight weeks. And we do have scholarships available if even that's a hard on somebody. Um, we want to make it accessible to everybody, but still have people get some skin in the game when they go through the program. And we're hoping this fall to get back into networking events. We would do some joint events with SCORE um, prior to the pandemic and just getting an opportunity for our grads to network with other business owners. So our next class is going to be in September. But in the meanwhile, there's a contact information here and also on the, the sheet you're going to get about our program and how to get more information. Uh, and I think that's basically all I have to offer. I don't know if there's any questions or if there's any in the chat. Um, we're happy to have people of all, of all uh, income levels so but we don't want people to be discouraged just because because they might be low income or unemployed because we'll help you through that process and hopefully we'll be able to pass you off to um linda and to jamie so thank you very much i thank i'm going to pa pass it off now to denise fry from the chamber Okay. Uh, well, uh, Kitsap Chambers uh, have come together uh, and have 
uh, designated me to speak. You know, there, there are six uh, chambers of commerce in Kitsap County uh, and uh, each has its own uh, flavor and, and uh, personality, just as our communities have their own flavor and personality. And whenever I'm asked to speak on behalf of such a diverse community, I, I'm uh, always very careful to check in and make sure that uh, what I'm saying is, is uh, agreeable to everybody. So uh, if it seems like it, I'm reading, it's because I have a few things uh, up on my screen uh, that I'm reading from, uh, just because I wanna be careful. Uh, those of you who know me probably know why. Uh, the Kitsap uh, uh, Chambers of Commerce all have members from the BIPOC community. Um, and each chamber uh, wants to serve its members in the most relevant way possible. Uh, I think we, I can speak for everybody when I say we really truly welcomed this opportunity uh, to hear directly from uh, BIPOC owned businesses uh, in our own communities. And uh, we're super glad to hear that Kita, uh, the organizer of this event, uh, is on board to continue these types of forums as a series. And uh, I know that the chambers really appreciate the role uh, that Kita plays here in Kitsap. It's definitely a, a benefit to uh, the chambers and to, even more importantly, to our members in the business community. Um, Chambers of Commerce are nonprofit membership organizations uh, with, with missions to serve our local business members and communities and larger communities as a whole. And we often serve as a liaison between local business and larger organizations such as KEDA and our city and county governments. Memberships allow chambers to not only raise operating funds through dues, uh, but more importantly, to represent those memberships in our advocacy. So member businesses receive uh, other benefits from their chambers, uh, but the advocacy portion is very important. Uh, I think we all know uh, that when you come together uh, with, with uh, common interests, common purpose, common cause, uh, that your voice is heard uh, a little bit more easily. Uh, in, in uh, larger uh, government agencies and organizations. So uh, that's, that's really important. Uh, but members also receive other benefits from their chambers. And those are the month, monthly or weekly newsletters you know, with important local business information, updates, event listings. The event listings might've uh, gone down this past year, but certainly uh, getting news out to businesses fast uh, through channels was really important during this pandemic. And I know uh, that the six chambers really tried to step up to make that happen. Um, you know, we started meeting together weekly uh, uh, during the pandemic. Um, and uh, we talked actually uh, about BIPOC owned businesses. And we started uh, kind of ruminating amongst ourselves about what uh, you know, we could do. Uh, and so I think sometimes we create benefits as we go, because I'm pleased to say that after hearing more about the BEST program recently, I think we were all aware of it, but we really, it, it, it connected with us in a different way. I'm happy to say that all six Kitsap Chambers of Commerce are considering granting one-year membership scholarships to best graduates in their home communities. Um, you know, I know we've got best graduates on the call tonight. I know that Toby is with us uh, from the uh, uh, Barber Salon uh, in, uh, in Bremerton. Uh, and, you know, there are other uh, best graduates. If, if we're able to give uh, a one-year membership uh, to any, like for the Bremerton Chamber, to any Bremerton graduate of BEST uh, who's setting up shop in Bremerton and serving Bremerton, um, you know, I think that's a, well, we think <laughs> that's a wonderful way uh, to bring you into the larger business community. And um, 
uh, I think it's a, it's a lovely way uh, to introduce you uh, into that larger community uh, uh, without an additional expense. And what we hope, of course, is that after that year, you're going to decide that the benefits you get through your chamber membership are worth the $250 you, know, you have to pay. So um, I hope that you all agree that that is a, a, a good investment. We thought it was a great investment. Um, and then in closing, uh, uh, I'm going to just uh, speak uh, as, as Denise Fry here. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that chambers of commerce around the country uh, can do a lot more to support our BIPOC uh, women and veteran owned businesses. Uh, and so the Bremerton Chamber of Commerce was motivated last year uh, to add the categories of BIPOC women and veteran owned to its online membership business directory. So new members will be asked if they'd like to be designated with one or more of those identifiers. Uh, and those who are already members can contact the chamber, we'll be doing some outreach uh, and asked to be identified. Um, and I just make the point that this was as simple as just adding another category. Uh, we just had to look at it that way. Uh, and so now, and this really came out of last year, we started getting a lot of phone calls from people who wanted to support uh, uh, black owned businesses. Uh, and uh, besides personal knowledge, uh, there certainly wasn't any way to identify uh, uh, our, our businesses in Bremerton, uh, uh, that were minority owned, BIPOC businesses, women owned businesses. And, and so it was kind of out of the community wanting to help um, that this idea started, you know, percolating. And we had to work with, you know, our software and, you know, all of that, but it really was a simple concept. And so I'm going to be advancing that dialogue uh, with the other chambers because I think um, that's also a step in the right direction. But there's probably a whole heck of a lot of things we could be doing that we're not doing uh, and uh, would love to be in better uh, communication around that uh, with our community. Um, and with that, uh, I think I'm going to turn it back over uh, to Sarah Van Gelder. Thank you, Denise. That was great to hear. And uh, I'm, besides Dr. Lillian, I'm your last speaker for this evening. And I just wanna thank Dr. Lillian for being willing to moderate today um, and thank Keita for stepping up and doing so much of the organizing to make this event happen. I'm one of the members of the Racial Justice Advisory Committee of the City of Bremerton. And uh, several other of the members of that committee are here. Maybe those of you who are, have your cameras on could, could just wave so we know who you are. Uh, there's several of us here. Um, and when we, were, when we were asking the question, when we, we've, just, we've just got started last summer, we were asking the question, what are some of the biggest threats to uh, communities of color in Bremerton? And what are some of the biggest opportunities? And we started thinking about what was happening in the economy with the pandemic. And if you remember back in 2008, when we had that major economic recession, a lot of people of color lost their homes and lost all the equity that went with that. And a lot of them, it was, it was really disproportionate. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of people across the board lost homes, um, but people of color were especially hard hit. And we know that homes are one of the routes to the middle class because they're a source of financing and they're a source of security and they're, they're so important to us. And, and a lot of communities have not recovered from that recession. And so then we were thinking about the recession that we were in or are in right now related to COVID and how many businesses are being impacted and especially disproportionately businesses owned by people of color. And so we asked ourselves the question, you know, if, if that's the threat that's facing our, our communities owned by people of color, is there something our community can do to come together to try to avoid having that same fate happen to businesses owned by 
people of color? And if that's already happening, are there ways that our community can help with the recovery? So this forum came out of that question. And I just wanna say how thrilled I am at how many different resources there are in this community and how much commitment I'm seeing across the board from government, from nonprofits. Um, I believe there'd be commitment from other businesses as well for people who are looking for uh, places to procure uh, the services and goods that they need and from uh, the US government who's looking at procurement and emphasizing uh, businesses owned by people of color. There's so many opportunities if we come together as a community and make this a commitment. And as Mayor Wheeler said, this is a sustained effort we need. It will not be something that one workshop will take care of or one uh, press release that uh, says some nice words. It's something that we're in for the long haul because the kind of disparity that we're experiencing today didn't happen overnight. It happened over hundreds of years, over hundreds of years of stolen labor from enslaved people. It happened over hundreds of years of stolen land from indigenous people. It happened, through, it continues to happen through uh, disparate uh, lending practices. It continues to happen uh, through who, who has access to even the PPP loans, which we know went to larger businesses and, and many people of color and maybe many smaller businesses didn't have access. So it's been happening all along. And I think one of the things that I'm really encouraged by for tonight is that I think we're saying we're going to do everything we can so that that disparity doesn't continue so that everyone in our community has an opportunity and we will do everything we can to, to support uh, businesses owned by people of color to get going, to thrive, uh, to, to be fully part of this community that we all love. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Lillian and just wanna thank you so much for, for coming in and moderating and uh, taking taking the chance because because uh, we were all sort of doing this for the first time and hopefully it won't be the last time. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. This was great information. Thank you also, Linda, Nancy, and Denise. Uh, we're running a few minutes extra with some, some extra time. So I think it's a great time to open up commu communications and questions for the audience. So if you have a question, and would like to speak to one of our presenters and direct your question to them, please take a moment to do so. So we'll have space for you now. I may not be able to see you, but if you could announce yourself, or Joe, if you could see who may have a hand raised, that would be great. Keeping um, an eye on it. I think we're, I can't believe this group shy. Here comes somebody. Is that me, Joe? I guess it was you, Faye. <laughs> okay, I had a question for uh, Linda. Um, so I have, my business has um, the OMD, I believe. And so to certify for the, what was the other one you said? There was another one that you could say. You're, you're muted, Linda. Yes, from the state's website, the OMWBE office, you want to get your MBE and your DBE certification. And okay. the reason why is, is because of many of the municipalities right now, because of Initiative 200 from 1996, I believe, or 1998, where they did, you know, did away with set asides. I'm just going to be straight up. Um, you know, uh, policies to overcome that uh, is, 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 is they're working on it. So, but the DBE is state certified, but it's a federal recognition. So if there are federal programs and they're set asides, then um, that's where you can get definitely take advantage, especially on consulting projects and contracts. So you want to get your MBE and your DBE certification, which is the disadvantaged business enterprise. Okay. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Linda, while you're with that, I still have, I have a brief question too. I think you mentioned about some bookkeeping and CPA services that were available. Mm -hmm. uh, are there standard feeds for that activity and is it an available ongoing or is it just a one-time consultation? Can you just describe those offerings a little bit more? 
Sure. So once we do an assessment of your firm, you may need like three months of service. So for example, the bookkeeping, just to make sure that uh, anything under 500,000 can be done very quick, you know, um, cost effectively on QuickBooks online. And so we have a bookkeeper to go in and kind of train you um, mm -hmm. to be able to reconcile those statements into the month. And so uh, we would say up to three months of service for, uh, uh, especially for bookkeeping and CPA services. And is that a standard fee or is it? Oh, based there's, on no, there's no, there's no fee for that. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And Denise, just a quick question to you about all of the chambers that you give oversight to. Can you just describe to me, if I'm a brand new black BIPOC business owner, what's your, what's my immediate advantage with joining the chamber and what services could you offer me that would benefit me as a brand new business owner? Yeah, I think at least in Bremerton, but I think this is throughout the whole county and my colleague, uh, David Emmons from the Silverdale Chamber is on here as well. Uh, Bremerton and Silverdale work very closely together. Um, but, you know, it's introduction to that larger business community uh, you know, we comp you your lunch at your first luncheon, you come in, uh, Faye sometimes comes to our luncheon, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we introduce you to that room full of other business owners and leaders, um, and those are important connections for new small businesses to have, um, because word of mouth uh, uh, can make a lot of difference, and those, those folks are influencers, right? So that's, that's wonderful. And then, uh, you know, it depends on how you get involved. So if you want to get even more involved with the chamber, you know, you join a committee. Silverdale Chamber has some great committees to get involved with. Uh, and then you're a part of a group effort that has greater impact. I think that that's you know, I used to run YWCA's for a living for many years, and they were a membership organization. And one of the big reasons for that was because there was power in numbers. You know, the voice was louder uh, when we had a group uh, that we were representing. Uh, and so I think that chambers of commerce play a vital role in advocating for small local businesses with our city, you know, Greg and I work very closely together on how to best support our small businesses, especially this past year. Uh, the chambers worked very closely with the county. Uh, so we are somewhat of a liaison, you know, to between that small business and the larger business community, and then the uh, government agencies and, and uh, 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 you know, larger organizations. And I think uh, from our perspective and from many, that's the real value in a chamber membership. Uh, and then the other is a lot of folks like to come together every month and they hear, uh, you know, great topics. Next week, we've got the mayor for the first time in what, a year and a half, maybe two years by now, Greg. Uh, and he's gonna be talking about everything that's going on in East Bremerton. Well, if you're a small business in East Bremerton, you better be at that luncheon, right? So you come on via Zoom, you hear about everything that the city is doing along that corridor. Uh, and uh, a lot of people, City Councilwoman uh, Dobbs was a part of that process. Uh, hey, Leslie. And I was around that table. And um, so when I was at that table with the city of, of Bremerton and there was the Department of Transportation and Leslie was there, Greg was there. But I was the voice that talked about access to local businesses. Okay, if you change this road, are people still gonna be able to get into that Allstate insurance driveway right there? Because if not, that business owner is gonna, you know, really suffer. Uh, so I think that that's a, a, a benefit of chambers that's often very hard to convey. Uh, but you know, I've been an advocate for much of my career. So I think my mind just feels, you know, goes in that direction. Uh, but certainly coming together. Uh, Toby, uh, we're going to get you or Ruben uh, at the next week, I hope, 
one of you better be coming. Bo heck, both of you come on down. Close the shop and come on down. <laughs> does that answer your question, Dr. Lillian? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And we, we will make sure Toby and Ruben, one of them will come down. We'll make sure of that for sure. Any other questions? What a great night for all of this resourceful information. So feel free to ask a question if, you, if you'd like. The floor is open. I see a question in the chat about assistance for figuring out what you file your business under for taxes. I'm always happy to take any of those questions. <laughs> I'd insist on pumpkin though having a say in it. Uh, that little that little furry person that you see in Jamie's lap is pumpkin, and she's also a very well known Vermertonian. I think probably just about as famous as Jamie Forsythe. Uh, well, it's a low bar. <laughs> uh, so, Nancy, I have a question for you. Um, you said that your next session for the eight week um, course starts in September, you say? You're muted. And there we go. Uh, yes, we will be making the announcement in, um, in July, mid July, when the next schedule will be. And we'll start taking sign ups in August. Okay, thank you. Are there any other ideas for future events? Anyone have any ideas or anything they'd like to suggest that we perhaps bring forward at our at next meeting opportunity? If so, you can put it in the chat. But I'd just like to conclude tonight. Joe, if you don't have anything else, I can just give a closing statement and then we can talk about what's to come from here. Perfect. Well, yes, yes. So as we conclude tonight, uh, I just want to say that we recognize the fact that BIPOC businesses have been challenged, especially during COVID, during this pandemic. And even as we reflect upon the history of Black Wall Street and what happened during that time 100 years ago. But we're growing. And tonight was an important step to exchange ideas and support each other in our business endeavors. We know the challenges of being successful BIPOC business owners are formidable, but the task is not only hard, but it's rewarding and it's absolutely necessary and it's urgent. So I trust that everybody here tonight leave invigorated and inspired, eager to meet the challenges we've identified tonight and those that are yet to come. So on behalf of the coordinating committee for tonight's BIPOC Business Forum, HEDA, um, Race Equity Advisory Council, all of our presenters tonight, thank you so much for attending. And I hope to see you all in our next in-person meeting in September, hopefully, fingers crossed. Please, please make sure uh, that you fill out the survey. I think that was seen in the chat box. And you can also visit Kita for any other information, a recording of this event, resource guides, upcoming sessions, survey links, networking and mentoring opportunities, and more business news and events. So with that said, good night, everyone. And thank you so much for being here. We look forward to our next time to meet. Thanks again, speakers. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>